Today I want to look at the steps in buying a property in Ireland. What are the various steps? The first step is that you as a purchaser will find a house presumably that you're sufficiently interested in to put a bid on. You will after a period of time hopefully be successful with the bidding process and you will be advised by the estate agent or auctioneer that you're the successful purchaser congratulations and the estate agent and the auctioneer will be looking for your solicitor's details it's at that point that you need a solicitor because you're going to be asked to pay a booking deposit to the auctioneer this could range from 5,000 to 10,000 but for a typical house of 250 to say 350, 375,000, you're probably looking at a booking deposit of 5,000 to 7,500, that sort of range. But once you go into the estate agent to pay the booking deposit, you are going to be asked who your solicitor is. The person or the purpose of this question is so that the estate agent will let his vendor's solicitor his client's solicitor know who's acting for you and at that stage then once that information is communicated to the estate agent he can contact the vendor solicitor and give him the details give him or her the details so you'll have paid a booking deposit the vendor solicitor will be then in a position to issue contracts because the estate agent will have been in touch and will advise the vendor or solicitor who has purchased the property and who is acting for you. Next step then is the vendor or solicitor will issue contracts along with copy title documents to prove title. When they are issued then they're obviously sent to me or the purchaser solicitor whose job it is then to review the contracts and review the title documents that are being offered. Part of this process will involve raising what's called pre-contract inquiries. On my YouTube channel, I have a video dealing with the typical pre-contract inquiries that are raised by solicitors. But once I raise the queries in relation to title and taxation and planning and any other issues that may arise, once I've received satisfactory replies, it's at that stage then that I can invite my client in, the purchaser, to sign the contracts. Now, it's important at the same time that the purchaser, unless he or she is lucky enough to be a cash purchaser, has finance arranged. And if that's the case, then the lender, the bank, will want to know who is acting for you as purchaser. You let the bank know and the bank will then issue the loan or loan pack including letter of offer and various security documents to your solicitor. Your solicitor then in trying to do things most efficiently will invite you in to sign both contracts and the acceptance of the loan offer and the security documents for the bank. That just saves two trips rather than or have one trip rather than coming in twice. Once you sign the contract then you're going to sign it in duplicate and you're expected to pay a 10% deposit. So if the house is 250 grand or say 350 grand, 10% of 350,000 is 35 grand. You subtract the booking deposit of 5 grand therefore you must pay a contract deposit of 30,000 if the house is 350,000. Obviously, if it's two hundred and fifty thousand, then the booking deposit or the contract deposit is twenty five grand. Booking deposit is five grand. You have to pay twenty. You sign both contracts. You sign the letter of offer, acceptance of the offer from the bank, and I then return the contracts to the vendor or solicitor. That, from a legal perspective, is an offer to purchase the property. There's no binding contract in place yet. It's simply an offer to purchase the property. The vendor or solicitor will then get his client or clients in to sign or countersign the contracts and the vendor or solicitor will retain one copy 
uh, or one counterpart and send the other one back to me. Once that's sent back to me, there's a binding contract in place and you are um, heading towards uh, completion. Between that binding contract coming into existence and completion, the vendor solicitor will get his or her client in to sign various documents, for example, the deed of transfer, the statute of declaration in relation to Section 72, family home declaration, perhaps a declaration in relation to planning and so on. Those, uh, the deed of transfer will have been drafted by your solicitor, me, uh, and sent to the vendor solicitor. But once the vendor's solicitor gets the vendor in to sign all the documents, they will be in a position to complete, assuming that they're able, able to give vacant possession. In other words, they're able to move out on a particular day. In relation to the closing date, the typical contract will have a closing date of, say, four weeks or five weeks from the date of the contract. That's typical, but it could be slower or it could be faster. It really will depend on the circumstances. For example, if the vendor has nowhere to move or perhaps are buying on, then things can get more complicated and get a bit messy because they may be waiting to purchase a house and complete on the purchase of a replacement dwelling. That can get messy. They may be buying a new house and the new house may not be completed yet. That can be a further delay. So that's just something that can happen. On the other hand, you might have a vendor who has plans made, perhaps has another house or has moved somewhere else or is moved into uh, rented accommodation or maybe has moved jobs and has had to move in any case, in which case vacant possession won't be a difficulty. But with a view then towards completing the transaction and moving towards completion on closing day, the vendor will get his client in to sign all the necessary documents. And I then, on your behalf, will be contacting the lender to check what's outstanding for check release. Check release is, is, is known colloquially as check release, but in fact it's an electronic funds transfer to my client account. That's where the loan comes. I'll then do a spreadsheet out and I'll send it to you and I will calculate exactly what I need from you to complete the transaction. And that spreadsheet, I call it um, a required to close document. In other words, it's a document that simply sets out the money stuff and what is required to complete the transaction. And I'll take into account the loan that I'm going to be getting from the bank on your behalf. Once you put me in funds then for the balance, I'm in a position to complete the transaction. Assuming that the vendor has got all the closing documents ready to send to me and they, they can give vacant possession on closing day, then the vendor is ready to close. On closing day then, you could carry out a closing day inspection or an inspection the day before that. But on closing day, I then ensure that the money is transferred to the vendor solicitor and he holds that money in trust pending completion. The vendor solicitor will send all the closing documents to me and I will hold the closing documents in trust pending completion. When we're both satisfied, then we will complete the sale. I will authorize release of the funds, the, the money, and he will authorize release of the keys from the estate agent. You will then go to the estate agent, pick up the keys and move in, hopefully. I then will send in the necessary documents to the property registration authority to register the change of ownership and to register the charge um, for the bank on the folio. I will also pay the stamp duty on your behalf. So I'll need PPS numbers and so on. After the property registration authority has registered the change of ownership and has registered the charge, then we get a notice of completion. Once that happens, everything then is sent, all the title documents rather, are sent to the lender and the lender will hold those documents until either the loan is paid off or you're going to sell again. I think that is pretty much it. I think that is it from start to finish. They are the steps in a transaction to purchase a property and um, if you find this video useful, I would appreciate if you gave it the thumbs up down below and if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments below or contact me by email um, so there as i say they are the steps in purchasing a property in ireland and i hope i haven't left anything out i don't think i have thanks for watching and as i say i would appreciate if you gave it the thumbs up down below thanks a lot